ಸರ್ವಧರ್ಮಸ್ವಿಣೆ ಅವತಾರವರಿಷ್ಠಾ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ನಮಃ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ದ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಲೈಫ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಡಿಸೈಪಲ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಿ ವೆ ಆರ್ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ಲೈಫ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣಾನಂದಜಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ whose supreme monastic name was sharachandra chakravarti now we shall continue meditating and studying the wonderful life of ramakrishna nanda ji maharaj because it was or it is completely associated with the great yuga avatar shri ramakrishna shri ramakrishna always tested the genuineness of his disciples using various methods before accepting them into his in a circle long after shri ramakrishna's passing away shashi told the following incident to swami paramananda who related it to the american disciples year later when swami ramakrishnananda first came to dakshineshwar he wanted to touch shri ramakrishna's feet that he might take the dust of his feet for in india in relation to the holy this is considered the greatest blessing but suddenly shri ramakrishna withdrew his feet swami ramakrishna nanda then thought that it was because he was unworthy afterwards shri ramakrishna told him he did so only to increase his yearning see how are the devotees tested the difficulties the problems the unfavorable circumstances are brought to us so when we it comes to us now from this incidents we can deduce <clears throat> that the lord is preparing for something higher to increase yearning for god ramakrishna himself is telling i did that when you came to touch my feet ramakrishna took away his feet so many people will be there what will they think upon when ramakrishna would be in samadhi if somebody touches ramakrishna would shout in pain if impure people touched so all sorts of imagination should, will be working now such thing is working in the mind of shishi maharaj thinking that i may be unworthy i may not be, be sufficiently pure to touch <clears throat> shri ramakrishna's feet so why did he do that why he knew that it is going to hurt him later on we see that mahendranath gupta who was there he asked ramakrishna why did you do that sir what did you do to that young boy why did you take away your feet then to ramakrishna had replied to increase his yearning so the goal of shri ramakrishna's avatara to coming yuga avatara to come down to this earth is to bring us love for god increase the yearning for god we get inspiration to realize god the goal of human life nothing else every act of shri ramakrishna the yuga avatara is meant to increase our love for god devotion to god so that yearning vyakulata now that's what ramakrishna is telling worldly minded may think so many things <clears throat> that is not important to us i remember an incident 
there was a physics classroom maybe they were studying about the vehicles now one of the lecturers asked the students there why are there brakes in the vehicle so many started answer, answering in many ways so some started telling to stop the vehicle to prevent accidents to so many other things so many reasons can be given the lecturer went on encouraging to give new answers but one of the answers from among that student was why are there brakes in the vehicles any vehicles the car the motorcycle or the bus or the lorry whatever vehicles you may take the train that student replied the best answer was to increase the speed of the vehicle isn't it surprising the brake of the vehicle is there to increase the speed of the vehicles can you imagine it may be surprising to you how can the brakes increase the speed of the vehicles suppose now you all most of you drive vehicles now let us hope that we will give you a vehicle which doesn't have a brake or the brake is failed or they have removed the brake now how much speed can you increase how much can you accelerate the vehicle how much can you press the accelerator at the most 5 kilometers per hour or 10 kilometers because you will be in fear that there may be accidents there may be if something comes there you can you cannot control the vehicle so there may be accidents so you cannot increase speed at all because there are no brakes not even 5 kilometers per hour because it's difficult to start once you stop accelerating even if you in olden days vehicle if you have to press the clutch it goes to the neutral then the vehicle will be freely moving suppose there is a gradient backwards downwards or front gradient if there is a, a road going down there is up then the vehicle will start coming back until the vehicle is put in the gear so now it will be difficult to accelerate increase the speed whatever it might be so the answer was wonderful telling that the brakes are necessary in the vehicle to increase the speed if you know there are good brakes strong brakes then you can drive up to 120 km per hour up to 160 km per hour why you know the moment you press the brake the vehicle will stop and there are chances less chances of having an accident so taking this clue the personality development speaker he, he was telling that the brakes which our parents put stop us from doing something the brakes the elder the guru the teacher or anybody in our life they put brakes they scold us they stop us do's and don'ts don'ts there are so many don'ts in our scriptures not to do that not to do this all the breaks which have been given to us in our life is not to stop us or discourage us or to create hurdles in our life but rather with this example you can take that it is to increase the speed of your success in your life go forward in your life and reach the goal quickly so likewise you can see ramakrishna here hurt the feeling of shishi shishi bhushan chakravarti but in reality what was there in the mind of shri ramakrishna that will increase the vyakulata it was not to hurt him it is not to show that thing called untouchability or whatever i am holier than thou attitude not at all ramakrishna is clearly telling so whenever 
there is some incidents in your life when the elders or the guru or the father and mother are hurting you deliberately. It is not to put you into trouble, but to increase your speed to reach the goal. If you can understand this, then if you can just grasp the idea behind whatever the action, then there'll be no friction at all. There'll be no pain at all. So keep this in mind. Ramakrishna Nandaji Maharaj telling us, Sri Ramakrishna withdrew his feet. Swami Ramakrishna Nandaji thought that it was because he was unworthy. Afterwards, Sri Ramakrishna told him that it was only to increase the yearning for God. What all different ways the gurus, the elders, the Lord teaches us. So make use of an opportunity if you know. What is the aim of your life? Then you will not be upset. Why do we get upset with the talk of our parents? Why do we get irritated when the father or the mother tells some harsh word or something? We go on getting angry with the elders or teachers or with friends or with wives or husband. If we can make your goal clear, your life goal is clear, then all this problem, you will ignore all these things. You will not at all give your mind to all those things. As yesterday, while I was reading one of the statements of Swami Vivekananda, what is liberty? What is freedom? Swami Vivekananda tells, freedom is non-attachment. It is not whining and suppose somebody does some harm to you, trouble to you. You go on having that feel of hurt. That is not freedom. Vivekananda tells liberty is non-attachment. You should make yourself so strong. You should make your senses so controlled, your mind so controlled that you are not affected by any circumstances, whether external or internal nature gives us, brings us. So that is liberty, that is freedom, true freedom, Swami Vivekananda tells. It is not just simply endurance, but you are not at all attached, you are not at all affected by any external circumstances. So now here, what a wonderful way the Guru is applying. All that is for increasing our yearning for God, to realize God. Afterwards, Sri Ramakrishna told Shishi, told Ramakrishna Nanda that it was only to increase his yearning for God. A small soul, see how, how can you explain us how to increase the yearning for God? Ramakrishna is telling us a small soul, an ordinary person with lot of ego, a jivakoti which is aspiring for only worldly enjoyments, a small soul full of pride and egoism. A small soul full of pride and egotism would have felt injured. But a big soul is only filled with greater longing. Now you can test yourself. We can test, do you get the feel of peak? And use that peak, use that feeling of hurt. To turn it towards God and go forward in your life, reaching the goal, or you increase your ego, you hurt your ego, you felt, you feel that anger and go away from there. A small soul runs away, you will not go to that person again. But a big soul, a person, if your goal is clear to realize God, then you use that opportunity every opportunity as a booster, as a thirst to go towards God. That's very important. So we can test each time in our life. When I get difficulty, when I get some scoldings, when I get some insult from somebody, how am I using it? Am I using it to increase my bloat, my ego and go away like a small soul? Or am I a bigger soul, a great soul? who will use that opportunity, all that scolding and everything to 
move forward in spiritual life. We can question ourselves, we can see, we can test, we can introspect, and then find out where am I? Where am I in the spiritual evolution? Which ladder am I in the spiritual progress? So these are all, though very small incidences, but should be used. Every incidence of the life of great souls or the teachings of Sri Ramakrishna, we can make use of it for our spiritual life. So test, we can test ourselves. What a wonderful thing. Sri Ramakrishna withdrew his feet. Swami Ramakrishna and the thought that it was because he was unworth unworthy. Afterwards, Sri Ramakrishna told him that it was only to increase his yearning. A small soul, full of pride and egoism, egotism, would have left injured. Who is the loser? We will be the losers. But a big soul is only filled with greater longing to realize God. So I was uh, studying about this EQ, IQ, and SQ. So what is this IQ? You all heard in your younger days when you are going to the school, the term called intelligent quotient, IQ. So they used to train up or they used to ask, they used to ask the question in the school or the primary school to test your intelligence, how well you can perform. How do you calculate in mathematics? How can you memorize? How can you do well in the examination? So how can you solve the problems? How can you earn more money? So these were the things you will see in the IQ. So what is meant by IQ from a larger perspective? So how to play the game of life? Then they thought this was not enough. Something more is needed. So later on, they found out the education is that it is not only that small part IQ is playing in our life. What is a little higher than that is EQ, emotional quotient. Because majority of our life is filled with emotions. We are playing with emotions. So what is emotional quotient? Now the first one IQ is how now the game of life, how to play the game of life. So here EQ is how to play the game of life in changed circumstances. Now all the whole of your life will be not bed of roses. There will be difficulties. There will be so many things coming up in your life. So the change circumstances, there will be failures. There will be troubles. There will be repercussions. There will be pain. So how to play the game of life in the change circumstances, in spite of all the problems, that is emotional quotient. Then now the higher thing is felt that seeing that more important and everything controlling the all other thing is spiritual quotient. What is the spiritual quotient? First was how to play the game of life, intelligent quotient, how to play the game of life in changed circumstances. Then in the spiritual quotient, why should I play this game of life? Why, why, why are we earning money? Why are we educating? Why are we going there? What are we going to do? After all this earning, then one day you have to die and go away, leave all your wealth here. What have you done? What have you achieved? So why? So we have to make our goal clear. When you come to know that your goal of life is God realization or to know your own self, Atma Gnana, when your goal of life is clear, then all these things become secondary. So your mind will be focused on going towards the goal of life. All the other problems will become secondary. You will not be troubled. You will give as much as importance to those things and you will ignore them, go forward in spiritual life because your goal is clear. I don't have time for all these petty things, puny things. Now to go forward in spiritual life, I have to reach my goal before my life is over. So now, why to play the game of life? 
because to realize that higher thing, then all these things will become secondary. So we are not clear about our life, then we go on quarreling, we're getting angry with your father and mother, your husband and wife, quarreling, 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 getting angry, because your goal of life is not clear. Once your goal of life is clear, you should ask again and again, why? Why have I come here? What do you want? Do you want these worldly things? Have you come here for the worldly? Go, go and enjoy it. But if your goal of life is God realization, concentrate on that, focus on that. So that's what here, a small soul, full of pride and egotism, would have left injured. But a big soul is only filled with greater longing for God realization. Will come more nearer to God. We have seen when the mother punishes the baby, maybe he has done some wrong thing. The mother will give some let us hope some beatings. What will the child do? Will the child run away from the mother? No. The child will go and embrace the mother more tightly. The more she punishes, the child will go and embrace the mother. Likewise, whatever might be the difficulty, whatever might be the circumstances, problematic circumstances, so we will, you make use of that and run towards God, run towards our goal. So that's what we have to learn. On the very first day, Sri Ramakrishna recognized that Shashi, Bhushana Chakravarti and Sharachandra Chakravarti, they were both cousin brothers. So the very first day, Sri Ramakrishna could recognize who these great souls were. On the very first day, Sri Ramakrishna recognized that Shashi and Sharat belonged to his inner circle. On 23rd December 1885, the master said to Yam Mahendranath Gupta, I think two days back was the birthday. He celebrated the birth anniversary of Yam, Master Mahashay, who has given us the wonderful work, the gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. The gospel, the scripture of the Kali Yuga, like they were Bhagavata, like it was the Ramayana now. The scripture of this age is the gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. So it was given by this great soul. It just scribbled something in the dairies. That's all. Afterwards, after the passing away of Sri Ramakrishna, he used to open that and one by one. When he used to see all little writings with dates, all the things which had happened would come back. Suppose Ramakrishna has told something, he would call Mahendra. Mahindranath Gupta M and tell, see, this is this, this is what maybe Ramakrishna could clearly see that he has misunderstood it. Would tell why? Because he would be recording all that thing for the future generation. So that Yam is here. In on 23rd December 1885, the master said to Yam Mahindranath Gupta, or the devotees used to call him Master Mahashay. He was a teacher. So any teacher in Bengali tradition, they used to call master. Mahasha is a word used for respectful people, to respect the people, Mahashaya. Maharaja, Mahabhagaha in Sanskrit, that is used, Mahashaya, Maharaja, Mahabhaga, these are all the respectful terms. So now Ramakrishna is telling Yam, Master Mahashaya or Mahendranath Gupta, when God assumes a human body for the sake of his devotees, many of his devotees accompany him to this earth. So when we do the puja, we offer flowers. Suppose we are doing Rama puja or Krishna's puja or Divine Mother's puja, Anuman's puja. So one of the ritual is we have to offer flower. Om Ete Ganda Pushpe. Sri Ramakrishna Avrana Devata Pyo Namaha or Ramachandra Avrana Devata Pyo Namaha Krishna Sri Krishna Avrana Devata Pyo Namaha or Shadanga Devata Pyo Namaha. So different flowers have to be given. We have to worship them. What is that? There are some devotees who are always accompanying the Lord when he comes to this earth as Avatara. Just like before the Lord comes, they will come and make clear the whole thing. For example, in the army, before the army marches, 
so there will be sappers and miners they will go and clear the way they will if there are any mines laid by the enemy army they will remove the mines suppose the bridges are broken they will make the bridge quickly for the army to march so they are the sappers and the miners likewise before the avatara comes these are the people the great devotees who will come and make the things ready for them and some devotees or great souls will come with the or born after or with the avatar to help him so ramakrishna is telling about them when god assumes a human body for the sake of his devotees many of his devotees accompany him to this earth some of them belong to the inner circle so some devotees like the adi shesha for vishnu on which the bed the bed of snake on which vishnu is sleeping adi shesha will come he has come as balarama lakshmana then this ayudas like sudarshana chakra the shanku other things will also the conch they will come with the lord so many are there jaya vijaya they will come to make the things ready so some of them are belonging to the inner circle and some to the outer circle they have their duties to do and some become the suppliers of his physical needs the divine mother used to reveal to me the nature of those devotees before they are coming so now as krishna tells in bhagavad gita that i will take the help of the prakriti the divine mother to take up a human body and do the leela the game or the avatar so now here the divine mother is telling shri ramakrishna used to reveal to me the nature of the devotees before they are coming she will make all arrangements she is the one who runs this world the divine mother so she used to tell ramakrishna the divine mother used to reveal to me the nature of the devotees before they are coming in a vision i saw that shashi shashi bhushana chakravarti and sharachandra chakravarti had been amongst the followers of christ <clears throat> so ramakrishna to ramakrishna it was revealed that both this sharat chandra and shishi bhushana chakravarti sharat chandra chakravarti ramakrishna is telling the divine mother told that they were the disciples of jesus christ in their last life can you imagine such great souls coming to shri ramakrishna in this avatara the lord bring such great souls the divine mother used to reveal to me the nature of the devotees before they are coming in a vision i saw shashi and sharat had been the followers of christ one day while shashi was hurriedly passing through the master's room looking for a particular object shri ramakrishna said to him whom are you looking for he is here <clears throat> here here shashi is now immediately shashi's eyes fell on the blissful form of the master he then realized that shri ramakrishna was the pole star of his life dhruva tara see in olden days when they didn't have this gps or the modern gadgets the people used to travel by ship in olden days they used to have mariner's compass so the mariner's compass would show them but even before that so the pole star in the daytime okay you can know the sun but what about in the night time <clears throat> the pole star dhruva tara so they would keep that and they would go forward the ship would go forward because on the sea you cannot know which direction you are moving so with that pole star as the aim when they move they get in that particular direction we are going to some places so likewise here for us who is the pole star 
the avatar purusha the god should be the pole star now suddenly dhruvatara there is a song also you are oh lord my dhruvatara so now the pole star of the life what happened ava shishi as a youth now one day in the room of shri ramakrishna he was searching for something he was going about for searching observing that one day while shishi was searching for something hurriedly passing through shri ramakrishna's room looking for a particular object ramakrishna said to him who are you looking for he is here 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 immediately shishi bhushana chakravarti's eyes fell on the blissful form of shri ramakrishna he then realized that shri ramakrishna was the pole star of his life so likewise what do we learn for us to we should make the lord as the pole star of our life nothing else if we make the lord himself as the pole star of our life then our journey on that rough seas will be made easier gradually shishibhushana chakravarti became acquainted with other direct disciples of shri ramakrishna would become sanyasins in their future life like narendra and other young disciples of master one day shishi and sharat visited narendra in his home and talked about master for many hours narendra told shishi and sharat that shri ramakrishna is bestowing love devotion divine knowledge liberation and whatever else one may desire narendra knew he is telling shishi and sharat what is he telling shri ramakrishna has come down to this earth we are so lucky that we are going we, could, we have an opportunity to serve him is bestowing ramakrishna is bestowing love means devotion bhakti devotion divine knowledge gnana prema and preeti on god bhakti on god service to god divine knowledge gnana liberation mukti and whatever else one may desire so ramakrishna has come down to the earth to do this he is bestowing on everybody on whomsoever he likes oh what a wonderful power the lord is manifesting as ramakrishna in this avatar narendra is telling these two people oh what a wonderful power he can do anything he likes that is the power of shri ramakrishna this great avatar for the outside people you cannot understand seeing the life of ramakrishna it looks is just like acting like a child he doesn't know he's so innocent but people who have experienced what is shri ramakrishna narendra such a strong mind he would not believe anything he couldn't be mesmerized by anybody deluded by anybody such a strong mind now he is telling the wonderful play of shri ramakrishna is telling he is bestowing love devotion divine knowledge gnana bhakti vairagya mukti and whatever else one may desire whatever you want the lord is ready to give on whomsoever he likes oh what a wonderful power he can do anything he likes so this was the statement of narendra to shashi and sharat observing that other disciples were experiencing ecstasy and devotion one day shashi shashi saw that he was not at all getting any bhava ecstasy or that exuberance of love to god it was expressed in some of the devotees he is not getting it so he felt he felt a little upset why am i not getting all these things observing that other disciples were experiencing ecstasy and devotion one day shashi prayed to the master for these spiritual experiences now very important point is to be understood here 
Ramakrishna is making a wonderful statement. What is important? These bhava and some external expressions are they important or what is more important? Now Ramakrishna is going to tell it to Shashi, through Shashi, we have to understand this. So what is important in our spiritual life? Suppose some people are having some astral travels, going here and there, having some special visions. And when you don't have it, don't worry at all. What is important in spiritual life, you can get it here. Now, when Shashi prayed to Master for those spiritual experiences, the Master said to him, My dear child, if you have that experience, you won't be able to serve me. If you have that experience, those experience, you won't be able to serve me. So to serve the avatara, the Lord, is very, very high. To serve God is very, very high. To do the work of God, it's not so easy. If somebody is selected for that work, you are great. The bhava, the experiences can be had. Then with that, you cannot serve the avatar or the guru. So service to the guru, service to the children of God. Serving the Lord is very, very important. So Ramakrishna is telling Shashi, my dear child, if you have that experiences, you won't be able to serve me. Then immediately, what was the reaction of Shishi? Shishi replied, then I don't need it, sir. I don't care for that ecstasy, which will take away my opportunity to serve you. So you can see Guru Bhakti, as I told you in the beginning of the class itself. What is that? Ramakrishna Nandaji is epitome, the ideal. How should we learn how should we do the guru seva guru bhakti so you have to learn that then you see the life of ramakrishna Nandaji. see he's immediately telling that then i don't need that ecstasy or those experiences sir replied shishi i don't care for those ecstasy which will take away my opportunity to serve you another day shishi noisily ripped a piece of cloth in Sri Ramakrishna's presence. Now we do our work in a slipshod way, untrained way, indisciplined way. The Lord cannot handle it. He doesn't like it. So when you are in the presence of the Lord, even if the Lord is not there in the form of the photo or the temple or the image, the Lord is everywhere. So how should we work? What should be the way we work? We should feel the presence of Lord and every work has to be done in such a way that we should please the Lord. Bhagavad Arpita Buddhi. Now, Ramakrishna is showing when Shishi noisily ripped a piece of cloth, you tear it, you do your work, you throw away the things, objects, make lot of sound in the bucket while keeping it, thrashing the bucket, kicking the things with your legs. So we do our work in a very bad way. So whatever way, whatever small work you are doing, you should do in a very disciplined way, soft way, with all awareness, with full mindfulness, everything, even the smallest of work. Now he is ripping that cloth, old cloth, making noise, tearing it, Shishi noisily ripped a piece of cloth in Sri Ramakrishna's presence, startling Ramakrishna. Because of Ramakrishna's experience of oneness, why did he? While he ripped that cloth, cut that cloth, Ramakrishna was startled or he was pained. Ramakrishna could feel the pain. Why? Because Sri Ramakrishna's experience of oneness, when the cloth was being torn, he felt as if his own chest were being torn as well. When a person is highly spiritually evolved, his physical and mental system becomes very sensitive. The master did not like his disciples' rough action. So Ramakrishna said to Shishi, he said to him, What are you doing, Shishi? 
never tear the cloth in that way the serpent power kundalini the kundalini shakti the serpent power which is within me may snap at you be careful the serpent power the kundalini shakti which is within me may get angry which is within me may snap at you be careful so we as spiritual seekers who are proceeding forward in the spiritual life we have to be very careful with the way we work with the way we behave every action of ours should be done as dedication to the lord we should not do in a very slip shot way uninterested way or in a very ugly way rough way every action of ours should be done noticing that the lord is always watching us he is with us we are doing every action to please the lord then the life our life changes yesterday while discussing about the ekatma pratyaya sara in mandukya upanishad and karika continuous self awareness you should be aware that you are the atman you are the turiya continuously not just for some time so here if you are a devotee if you are following the path of bhakti then you should be doing every work that the lord is watching you is always there with you is in your heart is with you or you is by the side of you always watching you you should do all your work to please him then your whole life will become a sadhana every small work will become a spiritual practice so now how it hurts god when we do our work in indiscipline way throw away things do it in slip shot way kicking it when one woman devotee in jairambati in the house of mother sharda devi after finishing the work of sweeping she just threw that broom and then kicked it in the cloth sorry kicked it with her feet to its place mother was observing that she told don't do that even the broom has a place in my house it should be respected though it is used for menial job of cleaning you should not do that in a neglected way you should not throw it and kick it with your legs you have to keep it in its proper place in your hand in a respectful way even a broom <clears throat> has a place in my house so even the broom the lord exists it you may think that the toilet cleaning object may be not so important but everything everywhere god exists so you have to show its proper place and respect to everything so that's what shri ramakrishna is teaching shishi will go through that again it is so important another day shishi noisily ripped a piece of cloth in shri ramakrishna's presence startling him because of shri ramakrishna's experience of oneness when you have realized paramatman parabrahman is one unity oneness of lord advitiyam ekameva advitiyam one without a second the oneness so ramakrishna had experience of the oneness because shri ramakrishna's experience of oneness when the cloth was being torn he felt as if his own chest was being torn as well when a person is highly spiritually evolved his physical and mental system becomes very very sensitive the master ramakrishna did not like his disciples rough action so shri ramakrishna is telling to shishi what are you doing shishi never tear the cloth in that way or do any work in that way the serpent power the kundalini shakti which is within me may snap at you be careful so every incidents in the life of these great souls is a lesson for us 
so that we can mend our life. We can change our life as spiritual aspirants and we can make our every action as spiritual discipline. <clears throat> From his boyhood, Shashi cherished a great regard for religious books. He was a keen student of the Bible and also Chaitanya Charitamrata, Life of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and had studied many lives of the mystics. He was a strict follower of religious discipline from his childhood. After studying Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's life, he resolved to be a vegetarian for the rest of his life. Though Brahmins, being born in the house of Brahmins, in Bengal, even the Brahmanas will take fish and non-vegetarian things. It's common even in the Pahadi Brahmanas. Earlier, long back, the Brahmanas used to take non-vegetarian things. But later on, due to the influence of the Jains and Buddhists, and also to the influence of the different saints later on, like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and other Vaishnava saints, most of the Brahmanas have, have given up eating meat. But it is there in Bengal, in some parts of the Himalayas, the Pahadi Brahmanas, they take non-vegetarian things. And now here in Bengal, especially the devotees or the worshippers of Divine Mother Kali or Durga, they take meat. So now here, by the influence of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's life, Ramakrishna Ananda Shishi gave up eating non-vegetarian food. After studying Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's life, he resolved to be a vegetarian for the rest of his life. Sri Ramakrishna also advised him to eat only vegetarian food and also to observe the Varanashrama system. This later helped him to work among the orthodox people in South India. So Ramakrishna knew then he would be the apostle. He has to go to South India where the orthodoxy was too much. The orthodox South Indian Brahmanas, the caste system, the Varnashrama Dharma was followed very strictly. So Ramakrishna encouraged this non-vegetarian discipline of Shishi and also to follow the caste system strictly because he knew he is going in future to become the apostle of the South India. He was the one who came to South India, Chennai and started the Ramakrishna Ashrama and spread it to other parts like Kerala, Karnataka, Bangalore and other places. So Sri Ramakrishna also advised him to eat only vegetarian food and to observe the caste system. This later helped Shishi to work among the orthodox people in South India. The master demanded from his disciples physical as well as mental cleanliness. So cleanliness is next only to godliness. Ramakrishna used to be very clean and also expect that his disciples or anybody with him, the cleanliness not only at the physical level but also at the mental level. The master demanded from his disciples physical as well as mental cleanliness. One day he said to Shishi, please scrape your tongue daily. Otherwise, I won't eat from your hand. In India, the scraping of the tongue, the moment you get up, wake up, you brush your teeth. And it's compulsory in India. I don't know in other Western countries. So, they have this metal scraper too in the Western countries. But in India, after brushing the teeth, the important thing is to scrape your tongue with your two fingers. They put that and scrape. So the food material which is stocked up on our tongue, that causes the bad breath and that is to be removed. And when you are, this, the mouth will be cleansed and you will, have, you will not have the bad odor from your mouth. So morning, Early in the morning when we brush our teeth, that is the custom we see in India. 
and many people while doing that scraping the tongue they'll be making lot of noise too so it also very important in the health system whereby you scrape the tongue in a very brisk way and make it more alert you know when the tongue is being scraped the prana shakti will come up you will feel like vomiting that is a way how you can do that act of vomiting so when that is done you see the blood and everything blood in the sense the in the blood vessels they all come up towards the head and you are sleep that mode of laziness alasya will go away because in early in the morning after waking from the sleep you will be some sort of a, in a in a sort of drowsy state so that alasya or laziness will be there so in the process of scraping the tongue and cleaning the tongue when you are doing that so you will become very alert that drowsiness will go away so that is also the reason you see in one of the yoga posture the kechari mudra you have to pull out your tongue it's not pulling out the tongue but it is you forcibly pull out the tongue that is one of the yoga asana kechari mudra so all that are necessary so when you scrape the tongue properly there are so many advantages early in the morning and the main important thing is to remove the bad breath so now ramakrishna is telling shishi that demanded from his disciples physical as well as mental cleanliness one day he said to shishi please scrape your tongue daily otherwise i won't eat from your hand so cleanliness physical cleanliness is important it takes more time and effort to prepare a delicious dish than it does to eat it similarly preparation and training are very important for god realization which may dawn on a person in the twinkling of an eye it is therefore important to learn how a god man like shri ramakrishna trained his disciples so that with that training learning how he was trained those people are trained we can also train our life we ourselves self discipline can be brought in because if ramakrishna is expected with this disciple these disciplines then it is also very important for all of us we can now practice that this can be discovered from the records and reminiscences of disciples like shashi who recalled it was only on sundays that there was a crowd at the temple on other days the master was left alone with his few chosen ones not everyone could stay with shri ramakrishna because he was a strict disciplinarian so not everyone could stay with shri ramakrishna because you would expect strict discipline and training from his disciples so that's why ramakrishna nanda ji or shishi maharaj is telling that it was not easy to leave with shri ramakrishna because he was a very strict disciplinarian not everyone could stay with him only those whom he chose to have and why did he keep those disciple with them ramakrishna nanda ji or shishi maharaj is telling in order that in one night he might make them perfect is to ask those disciples who become the sannyasins or who is to move forward in spiritual life quickly to stay with him why why was it now shishi maharaj is giving the reason and why did he keep them with him in order that in one night he might make them perfect in spiritual life just as a goldsmith gives shape to a lump of gold so he would mold them in such a way that their lives would be transformed they would never forget that impression he had stamped on them sri ramakrishna possessed the peculiar power to discern at once whether a man was fit to serve him or not sometimes people would come and want to stay with him but seeing their unfitness he would tell them with childlike frankness you had better go home occasionally 
there could be a there would be a feast and the master would sit with him, with his disciples sometimes a man would come whose character was blemished but who would sit with him in the attempt to appear good at once shri ramakrishna would discern his character and say here is a man who is not pure he will spoil my children the other pure disciples ramakrishna used to call them his children he will spoil my children without hesitation he would send him away when he was alone with his special disciples they would sing and talk and play together if a visitor came he would tell him go and have a bath eat something and rest a while about 2 o'clock he would begin to talk and he would go on teaching for 5 or 6 hours continuously about spiritual life shri ramakrishna would not know when to stop telling about god that he liked to tell speak about god to his disciples or anybody there sometimes the master would wake at 4 in the morning and he would call the disciples who were sleeping in their room saying what are you all doing are you snoring get up sit on your mat and meditate so these words of shri ramakrishna should be read every night before we going we are going to sleep and early in the morning at 4 o'clock or 3:30 you will remember ramakrishna telling what are you doing wake up are you snoring so sometimes the master would wake at 4 in the morning and he would call the disciples who were sleeping in his, in their rooms saying what are you all doing this word should go deep into our subconscious mind what are you all doing snoring get up sit on your mat and meditate on god sometimes he would wake up all of us at midnight call them and make them spend the whole night singing the glories of god and praising the name of the lord all the disciples were still at a malleable age what is this malleable flexible you could mend them if it is not malleable it will break it will snap so malleable age is you can change them you can perfect them you can discipline them so all the disciples were still at a malleable age in their teens or early 20s two of those disciples were scarcely 16 and the master played with them as if they were little children he was very fun loving and was discovered near the panchavati one day by a visitor playing a game of leap frog with his boys like a small child he was playing the leap frog you know frog race you leap like a frog and who will win so ram krishna in panchavati was playing a leap frog with his disciples sometimes he would send them into peals of laughter by his mimicry and jokes then again he would be grave and wake them long before the dawn and make them sit in meditation on the mats on which they had been sleeping again at the evening hour he would tell them to go to the banyan tree in panchavati and meditate the master said to all of us if you will practice even 1/16th part of what i have practiced the spiritual disciplines you will surely reach the goal so ramakrishna would inspire with these words telling that i have done so much you need not do so much of sadhana i have done all that spiritual practice for you the master said if you will practice even 1/16th part of what i have practiced you will surely reach the goal that 16th part of the individual striving 
however, was essential. He could not impose realization as one pace a picture on a page. He could not impose realization of God as one pace a picture on a page. Someone said to him once, these are all the reminiscences and words of Shishi Maharaj about Ramakrishna. Someone said to Ramakrishna once, you have the power to touch to make a man perfect. So just with one touch, Sri Ramakrishna could change the character. He could give visions. He could make them progress forward in spiritual life. So he had that powerful touch. So once one person told Sri Ramakrishna, Oh Master, you have the power to touch to make a man perfect. So why do you not do it to everybody? Simply touch everybody and make them perfect. To which Sri Ramakrishna replied, Because if I did, Sri Ramakrishna answered, Because if I did, the person would not be able to keep that perfection. He should earn it. I may give it to him. Because if I gave that perfection to him, by my touch I can do that. I have that power. If I did so, Sri Ramakrishna answered, that person would not be able to keep that perfection. He must grow to it and be ready to take it. His method was peculiar. He did not tell a man to give up everything. On the contrary, he would say, go on, my children, and enjoy all you wish. The Divine Mother has given this universe for your enjoyment. But as you enjoy, remember always that it does not come from yourself, but out of the Mother's bounty. Never forget, never forget her, the Divine Mother, never forget her, the Divine Mother, in your pleasure, but always recognize that it is from her. In this way, by becoming mindful of Mother, the person would gradually lose all taste for those pleasures of the senses. In the Yoga, Patanjali Yoga Sutra, it is told Prakriti gives us both, what is that? Pleasure, Bhoga and Apavarga. Bhoga Apavarga, the term used in Raj Yoga is Bhoga Apavarga. The Divine Mother gives us both Bhoga and Apavarga. She has given pleasures, go and enjoy. But she is also giving us Apavarga. That is, you have to go towards spiritual life, the spiritual goal. And that is so nicely explained by Sri Ramakrishna here. His method of teaching to the disciple was peculiar. He did not tell a man to give up everything because people have the desire. Now, Ramakrishna is to train them and tell them, go on, my children, and enjoy all you wish. The Divine Mother has given the universe for your enjoyment. The Divine Mother has created this universe for your enjoyment, Bhoga. He will also give you Bhoga. Just like what is the name of Mother Lakshmi? The meaning of the name of Lakshmi? It comes from the root word Lakshya. What is Lakshya? Goal. What is goal of your life? God realization. So how is Mother Lakshmi? giving that the name itself is indicating Lakshya, goal of your life. So she will give wealth, money and everything. Lakshmi gives us wealth and money so that after fulfilling your desires, satiation, turn towards your goal that is God realization. Fulfill your desires, okay. But it's not for just sensual enjoyments only. After that, 
after some enjoyment don't be immersed in that worldly pleasures turn towards god your goal lakshya turn towards that goal god realization that is the meaning of the name of mother divine mother lakshmi so you can see sri ram krishna is training his disciples in a very special way he would say go on my children and enjoy all you wish the divine mother has given this universe for your enjoyment but as you enjoy this is very very important all of us but as you enjoy remember always that it does not come from yourself but out of divine mother's bounty she is giving you it does not come from you you think that you have earned everything no it has come from the mother's bounty the divine mother has given you you should remember that never forget her in your pleasure always remember the divine mother all this bounty all this pleasure all this wealth is given by the divine mother so never forget her never forget divine mother in your pleasure but always recognize that it is from her in this way by becoming mindful of the divine mother that person would gradually lose all taste for the worldly pleasures of the senses and then turn towards god this is how shri ram krishna used to train them the master never told us that anything was wrong the master never told us that anything was wrong on the contrary he used to say go and have a good time the responsibility will be mine see what a wonderful way shri ram krishna is telling go and have a good time the responsibility will be mine he knew there was nothing wrong in the pleasures of the world that by tasting them his children would come to realize their worthlessness and they would be satisfied only with higher pleasures he was not merely the helper of the good he was also the helper of the wicked he tolerated and loved both the good and the wicked he was also the helper of the wicked he tolerated and loved both he wanted his children to always be happy so ramakrishna wanted all his disciples wanted all his children to be always happy and if one of us came with the least show with the least shadow on his face the master could not bear that he would at once scold us and tell don't be sad be joyful so this is very important for all of us he tolerated both the wicked and the good he wanted his children to always be happy and if one of us came with the least shadow on their face the master said he would scold us the master could not bear that we are sorrowful or having a long face he wanted the disciples to be happy always joyful we have heard swam vivekananda statement what is that who don't have the right to come out to the public with a long face with a sorrowful face because you will be spreading the disease to others too this is contagious when somebody looks at your long face or sorrowful face swami shivapada ananda ji maharaj used to call popo face that is papaya face popo face so if you come out with that long face and sorrowful face serious demeanor then the others the moment they look at your face they to get that feeling it is contagious so you are spreading the disease of sorrow so swami vivekananda used to tell go before coming out to the public watch your face in the mirror whether it is joyful or it is long face if you have a long face you are a sorrowful face you don't have the right to come out and show your face and spread the disease always be joyful swami vivekananda used to tell there should be a smile on your face so that the joy will spread to everybody you don't have the right to come out to the public with a sorrowful face that's what swam vivekananda used to tell and you can see the training by the guru here 
Sri Ramakrishna wanted his children to be always happy. And if one of us came with the least shadow on his face, the master could not bear that. He would at once scold us. Just by looking at a man, Shishi Maharaj is telling, just by looking at a man, Ramakrishna could tell what that person was fit for. If he saw that he was falsely leading a religious life, externally wearing the religious garb, but internally he is for something that is hypocrisy. If Sri Ramakrishna saw that a person is falsely leading a religious life, he would say to him, why are you a hypocrite? Go and marry. Go and get married. If he saw that a man was ready to renounce, he would not ask him directly to give up, but he would direct his mind in such a way that the man would of his own accord renounce everything and go towards God. He used to say that by seeing even one corner of a man's stoke, Ramakrishna himself used to say that by seeing even one corner of a man's toe, he could make out just what sort of a man he was. No, Ramakrishna had learned physiognomy. Anga Samudrika, Mukha Samudrika. We think that Ramakrishna is uneducated because that very year of his birth, Makali had brought in the English education to India. Though Ramakrishna directed his mind towards God realization after that perfected, concentrated mind he used to apply anywhere, he used to get all the knowledge. Thousands and thousands of rishis and munis, saints and great people used to come to the Kshaneshwar. And they would have so much of knowledge with them. So with little Focus, Ramakrishna could learn. He had photographic memory. So whoever used to come with whatever knowledge, he had learnt alchemistry. He had learnt Anga Samudrika, Mukha Samudrika, 64 important vidyas. Everything you knew. We think that he didn't go to the school and get degrees and master degrees. He had got more than that. Not only that, he realised the essence of that education too. As Swami Vivekananda used to tell, collection of information from here and there, from bookish knowledge is not education. And Swami Vivekananda tells, if I have been given another opportunity to get, to get educated, I will not go in for collection of facts, but I will go for the concentration of the mind. Then the mind concentrated will become like a focus, focused laser or a torchlight. Wherever you apply that mind and the knowledge is automatically given up by the Prakriti to us. So if I'm given another chance for education, I will not go for information collection, but for focusing and concentrating the mind. And that is what Ramakrishna did. In the beginning itself, he went in search of the truth and concentrated and focused his mind. Then afterwards, wherever he applied, all that knowledge was his. A lot of knowledge. He was expert in yoga, Hatha Yoga. He reached the end, not only just knowledge, bookish knowledge, but he practiced it and got the end, the Jada Samadhi too. Everything. He had so much of knowledge. Oh, he was an ocean of knowledge. Now, he had that wonderful knowledge of Anga Samudrika and Mukha Samudrika. Just by looking at a man, you could tell what that person was fit for. If he saw that he was falsely leading a religious life, he would say to him, go and get married. If he saw that man was ready to renounce, he would not ask him directly to give up, but he would direct that person's mind in such a way that the man would of his own accord renounce everything for God. Ramakrishna himself used to say that by seeing, just by seeing even one corner of a man's toe, just a toe, corner of the toe. So he was expert in this Anga Samudrika that even if he sees the corner of a toe of some person, he could make out just what sort of a man he was. 
that was the expertise of the knowledge of anga samudrika and muka samudrika he had at one time there was a poor boy who used to come almost daily to sri ramakrishna their life is also there in god lived with them that person so this boy he was very poor his desire was for money he wanted to earn more wealth and ramakrishna gave him to but in the beginning he would not give he would relent he would make him wait and wait and come many times at one time there was a very poor boy who used to come almost daily to sri ramakrishna but the master would never take any of the food he bought now you can see if you give something in the form of the fruit or anything give to a great soul or a realized soul or a saint they will give you back in thousand folds automatically whatever you are given will come back to you thousand folds now ramakrishna would not take anything for the fruit or sweet or anything bought by this boy so ramakrishna and the ji or shashimar ji telling we did not know why ramakrishna would not take anything from this boy finally one day shri ramakrishna said this poor fellow comes here because he has a great desire to be rich he wants money he wants wealth very well let me taste a little of what he has bought and he took a small quantity of the food bought by that boy who wanted to get more money because many times shri ramakrishna used to tell the devotees come they will bring one small cucumber and behind that cucumber there will be thousands of wishes or thousands of desires they want to fulfill thousands of desires so when you are eating the free gift free bees don't think that you have got free bees free gifts and be happy and eat it you have to take the sins of them to whose ever gift you take whose ever money or any other object you take from others when they give the gift oh you become so happy here we see that we train the children and the younger ones and make to for them to become happy when they receive the gift very very bad in our india in our families we used to be tra- trained not to take gifts now it is all changing in olden days we have seen they would never allow us to take money or fruit or anything from others why because you have to share take away their sins too no nothing is free in this life the free cheese is only available in the mouse trap so that will take away your life so whatever you take free from anybody you have to work hard earned money you have to take you have to take your things you have to get you have to enjoy only from your hard earned money that is what we used to be trained from our childhood our parents would not allow us to take any gifts because you have to share the sins of those people with one cucumber they will have thousands of desires thousands of wants and it will make your mind impure if you take those things so now here at one time there was a very poor boy who used to come almost daily to sri ramakrishna but the master would never take any of the food he bought now shishi maharaj is telling we did not know why sri ramakrishna would not accept anything from him finally one day sri ramakrishna said this poor fellow comes here because he has a great desire to become rich and wealthy okay very well let me taste a little of what he has bought and he took a small quantity of the food which that boy had bought after that the boy situation began to improve immediately and ramakrishna anand ji is telling today is one of the most prosperous men of calcutta he had the basmati press and he became very rich i think we have read in the life of latu maharaj later on latu maharaj used to live in that press the office of the press used to be staying there not many times in the monastery used to stay in that press basmati press 
so that was that boy who had great desire for rich ramakrishna would not take but one day shishi maharaj is telling very well let me taste a little of what he has bought and he took a small quantity of that food the boy situation began to improve immediately and today is one of the most prosperous men of calcutta we have learned in bhagavata sudhama the poor friend of krishna so much of poverty no food to eat no house to stay very very difficult situation the wife and children were starving so one day the wife told go to krishna your friend is so rich he is the king now in dwaraka and ask something from him okay hearing to the words of the wife he started his journey to dwaraka the wife told you should never go empty handed when you go to the lord or the saints or to the temple so carry something they didn't have anything in the house so they had some parched flattened rice poha or chuda she fried it a little because they were so poor and he tied it into his cloth dirty cloth old cloth worn out cloth and took it when he went to krishna he was so ashamed he didn't want to ask anything wealth or anything but krishna himself could see the poverty he did so he, he served him so much his friend sudhama then afterwards he told have you bought anything to me you know that i like chida krishna's favorite item was chida or that poha whatever flattened rice so that's why we offer chida or flattened rice to lord krishna always he liked it have you bought as the mother your wife sent that to me she was hiding because that poor quality chida he was bought in that worn out cloth he didn't want to give he felt ashamed seeing the riches of krishna the rukmini astabama all that day and krishna forcibly took it and started eating one or two morsel then all the daridra the poverty everything went and then rukmini also told i too want the share she took she was lakshmi's avatar there the moment here krishna is eating and lakshmi is eating the rukmini there all that poor house went away palace appeared in that place all the wife and children had lot of wealth and jewelry they became rich overnight and when sudama went back he couldn't recognize he thought he has come to some other place so that is what if you give the lord if you whatever you give the lord he will pay back thousand times Now you can see that in the life of Sri Ram Krishna, this boy. At one time, there was a very poor boy who used to come almost daily to Sri Ram Krishna. But master would never take any of his food, which that boy bought. We did not know why Ram Krishna behaved like this. Finally, one day Sri Ram Krishna said, "This poor fellow comes here because he has a great desire to become rich. Very well, let me take, let me taste a little of what he has bought." and he took a small quantity of food which that boy has bought the boy situation began to improve immediately and today he is one of the most prosperous man of calcutta he had that he became the owner of press printing press busumati so we will <clears throat> stop the study of the life of and teachings of ramakrishna nanda ji now whereby we are getting more information we are meditating on the yuga avatar shri ram krishna we'll continue that tomorrow thursday friday and again sunday monday and every day evening we are studying the mandukya karika mandukya upanishad and karika people are welcome to that too it may not be every day sometimes when it is possible we are sending the link today also if god permits i will send the link to you you can attend that discussion on mandukya upanishad and karika too now if you have any questions of what we have discussed today or on spiritual life you can ask we'll dedicate 5 minutes or 10 minutes to question and answers if you have any questions you can ask any questions any doubts I think there are no questions on the YouTube live chat. 
Sridhar Jagwant, are there any questions on the YouTube live chat? Okay, if there are no questions, then we can conclude with the prayer. YouTube live chat. Om Maharaj. Yeah, please there are no questions on the. There are no, there are no questions on the YouTube, Maharaj. Okay. Om Priyatam Pundari Kaksha Sarva Yagneshwaro Harihi Tasmin Tushte Jagat Tushtam Prinite Prinitam Jagat Harihi Om Tatsat Sri Ramakrishna Panamastu Thank you. Namaste. Om Namo Narayanaya.